Hi everyone, welcome to Spiritism and the Media here on Kardec Radio. It's so good to be back here and to have your company to study here a little bit about Spiritism and its relation with media and with communication. Last week and the previous one we talked a little bit about Word and today I brought also a text that is going to add a lot of information to what we have already seen here. This text is from Joana de Angelis, who is the spirit guide from the Brazilian medium Divaldo Franco, and it was psychographed here in the US, in Santa Monica, California, in 1988. The reason I brought it for us to study is because in the whole text she talks a lot about the word and about how we can wisely use it, and also about the power of the word. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to read a little bit the text, like some sentences, and then we can comment. I, I'm going to comment uh, a little bit about the teachings that she's bringing to us. So let's begin. The word is the emission of the thought that verbalizes itself, that carries the mental content that seeks to reach an end. So as we saw before, here she's saying that the word is the mission of the thought. That is, we know that the thought is created in the spirit. So we have the spirit, the perispirit, that is the spiritual body. And then we have this, our physical body. So the word and the thoughts is not created in our physical brain, but it's created by the spirit. By, for example, me, Marcelo, the spirit, not here, this physical being that is talking to you through this physical body, but the spirit Marcelo is the one who thinks, and then I use my physical body to use this, to send this thought and all these ideas to you. So what she's saying here is that the word carries this mental content. That is, the word carries whatever we create in our mind, we create in our thoughts, we create with our spirit. Then she says, even when trying to mask the intimate feelings, it is a vehicle of high vibratory load that unveils it. Because that's true, many times we try to hide what we are feeling, to hide our sentiments when we are talking to someone, and we may use different words, different speech, trying to hide what is really happening inside of us. But here, according to Joana de Angelis, we cannot do that because not only the word and the speech, they bring what we are thinking, but it also brings what we are feeling and how it, how it happens. A very simple example, we can bring the same sentence and say it in very different ways. And each time we say a sentence, depending on the way that it, it, it is, uh, we say it with a higher voice, with a lower voice, of depending on the uh, punctuations that we give to it, it's going to give a little a different uh, meaning to the ones who is uh, listening to it. It may be the same sentence, the same words, but we can tell it in different ways. And what Joanna is saying here is that those words that we bring to, to, to another person, it brings, it carries that vibration, it carries what is really happening inside of us. And today it's easier to see because when, of, with all the technology that we have, for example, I'm here talking to you, so you can hear to me through the Kardec radio, through the radio or the app, or you can watch, if you're watching me on Facebook, uh, you can also see how I'm seeing, saying that, like my word, my eyes expressions, the way I speak, the way I use my mouth, the way I use my hands. So it all helps to express ourselves. So not only the word, but all this package that comes with the word helps to show the way we are feeling, show the way we, uh, what we have inside, show who we truly are. And then she also says, it's correct. It's correct use makes it an instrument of great power, favoring those who expose it. So let's give a, an example of when you are saying about a person who uses or uses the word with this great power, there's no better example than Jesus. Jesus, as we know, as the spirits 
tell us in the Spirit's book, Jesus is our model, is our guide, so we need to follow his steps and we need to follow his example. Imagine all the times that Jesus could talk to so many different people from some, so many different backgrounds or uh, and he could make himself uh, available to all of them and he speaks his words he could give like for example he could talk through parables and through those parables he could speak to many different people and each one of them would understand different layers of that those parables and today we are still studying those parables and try to identify all the teachings that you have in them and Jesus was always kind Jesus was always gentle with his words so he's the best example that we have when we are uh, talking about the best way for us to use this power of the word let's see Jesus and we have all the examples from the Gospels in the Bible and also from other books that we have that the Spiritism brings to us for example we have Jesus in the home when we have all the talks that Jesus had in Simon Peter's house we have also the book The Good News by Humberto de Campos psychographed by Chico Xavier when we have some stories that we don't find find in the Gospel some stories of the Gospel or some stories that we do not have in the Bible and w where we can see Jesus with a different eye we can see Jesus as the way that he truly was that he truly is like this pure spirit that use wisely each word when he is talking to any person so that's uh, the best example that we can have is Jesus and the best way we can see is like studying and reading all the Jesus teachings that we have available to us and then John Angelis also says when loaded with sincerity and faith it, the word, acts as vibratory wave that weakens the negative forces that surround the individual promoting the aspirations with which it is clothed so let's see how important it is she's talking again about these vibrations that we bring when we use the word and how we can weaken the negative forces let's see again the example of Jesus all the time he was expelling the demons or as we know today in the with the spiritism when he was like indoctrinating those spirits who were in need he would with this, his words he would uh, give to those spirits what they really need, the love they needed and all this vibratory load that they were willing to receive so Jesus could with his words give the help that people need, give the help not only the incarnate but also the help the discarnate needed and also we have many examples of that in the Bible and John de Angelis also says if it brings pessimism, doubt and accusation it attracts by mental attunement diseases, shadows and hostility that add up overpowering the one who exteriorizes it so here is important for her to say for us to see how she, she says that that we attract our the other vibrations around us as she says that it is the word is a vibration it is like this mental vibration so let's think about our radio and all the radio frequencies depending on the station that we want to listen to we can change the dial and so we can connect to that vibration and the same thing that happens to us and not only we can connect to, to the ones to the vibrations to the, the, the persons that we are open to receive their thoughts or their ideas or their uh, love or any other feelings they may have but depending on how we act depending on what we say and the way we say it we are also attracting it because it's, law, it's the basic law of attraction so if we send negative thoughts we are receiving back negative thoughts if we send negative words probably we are going to receive back negative words that's what we attract and that's what Joana de Angelis is saying here so I'm going to read one more sentence and then uh, I'm going to summarize this uh, topic here and later in the next show we are going further because we are almost out of time so here 
and the next one she says, the education of the will contributes in a special way to the happy exercise of the word. Talking without thinking is a common automatic act. Thinking before speaking results from the conquest of moral and spiritual values that dignify man. So it's very common for us to, at least for me, it's very common for me to talk without thinking, especially when we are in the middle of an argument or we are when we are in, at a moment that we are a little bit nervous or we are uncomfortable with something that's happening to us, somebody says something to us, we go there and reply automatically without thinking, without, without having that time to meditate about what the person is saying. And again, let's see what Jesus used to do. In the book, the Jesus in the Home, that I uh, quoted a little bit before, by the spirit Neo Lucio and psychographed by Chico Xavier, we can see that all the time, or almost all the time, Jesus used to listen to all the ones who were at Simon Peter's house, and then he would take a moment of silence, and after that moment of silence, he would speak, he would tell his teachings to them. What is that moment of, of silence? This is exactly what Jonah is saying here. He wasn't talking without thinking. He wasn't being automatic. He was t paying attention to what each person was saying that. He was thinking about what the problems they were bringing to him. And then he was bringing to them the teachings that they needed, the words that they needed to hear. So again, I highly recommend this book. It's a very good book. Jesus in the home, and there we can see so many examples of how Jesus wisely used and uses his words to teach us and to bring her, us his peace and his love. So I'm going to stop here, and the next show I'm going to, to bring more uh, sentences from this text. I'm going to finish this text, and just now before we end, I'm going to read uh, a short passage from the book Happy Life, so we can end the show with happy words for us to think about during the week. So I have here number 112. Read one small page a day where you find encouragement and inspiration. Incorporate this duty into your daily habits. It will enrich you with jubilation, clearing away the clouds that could envelop you in the hours to come and leading you to well-being in case there is some disagreeable surprise. Everyone needs a good counselor, and on this page, which you will extract from the Gospels, you will find the secure guideline and the word of wisdom for any situation. If a man, if men would just reflect a little before acting, they would avoid countless evils. Since others are not doing it, why not? do it yourself. You see how this lesson is connected to what we just talked? If men would just reflect a little bit before acting, before talking, before speaking, they would avoid countless evils. So let's think about this during this week. Thank you so much for your attention. May God be with all of us. See you next week.